Really? You gonna attack me? Really? Really? Get off! It hurts! You asshole! And it's recording. Um, hey guys, uh, it's Liv. Right now, I'm going to be recording the third part to my book tour. Stop, you little bitch! God damn, she keeps fucking attacking me. Um, I'm gonna be doing the third part to my video. I had started doing it earlier, but my brother had to fucking video bomb me. Um, which was total bullshit. So, I had to delete it. Thankfully, I was only like four minutes in. And I'm not keeping that in the video like I had to do yesterday. Because I was like 30 minutes in. Alright, so. Um, I did this shelf yesterday. I had completed that whole shelf. I completed that whole shelf. Now I just gotta do the bottom shelf here. And then I gotta do, um, up there. So I just have a little bit left to do. Somewhat a little bit. Um, I'm trying to get as close as possible without being in the video so much. You know, there. Alright, um, so the first book is, um, is going to be Fifty Shades, the Fifty Shades Trilogy by, uh, E.L. James. Uh, the first one is Fifty Shades of Grey, the second one is Fifty Shades Darker, the third one is Fifty Shades Freed. Um, it is basically about submissive and dominance. Um, he... He's a, there's a, um, I forget his first name, but his last name's Gray, and, um, he is the CEO of a company, and he likes to be dominant. Uh, he likes to make his, uh, the women he has in his life, he likes to be dominant over the girls that he's with. And it's not really a relationship, it's basically a submissive and dominance kind of thing. And, um, she, there's a girl named Anastasia Steele, goes there for an interview and they make some kind of connection. And she changes him. Um, it turns out she doesn't like the lifestyle that he lives. So, she tries to do it, but she leaves him, and he ends up changing a little bit to get her back. And he didn't want to get married, he didn't want to have kids, um, but that ends up changing in the third one. So, it's actually pretty good. Um, like I said, it's really good. You know, I didn't think I'd like something like this, but my parents bought it for me, and I liked it. Uh, sorry if I pause frequently. Um, my wrestling is on, as you can hear. Uh, my favorite tag team is off, um, which is Enzo and Cass. Alright, so this is... Um, Heartbeat, um, Heart, yeah, Heartbeat so by, way. uh, Danielle Steele, and this is a little loud. Um, basically, um, there's a guy named Bill, he is, um, so busy watching his career soar that he didn't, uh, notice that his marriage was failing. He's got two kids, and over the course of, um, I don't know how long, um, I think it was like nine years. Um, oh, is this, yeah, nine years later, living alone in Hollywood, still reasonably sweet, um, with top chart ratings, um, he vacations with his two young sons, um, which is all he wants from life. And there's Jack. 
um, there's a girl named Adrian who thought she had everything. Um, she had a good production job, a uh, pr production assistant job, and she had a husband. And she ended up finding out she was pregnant, and her life um, kind of went to chaos when her husband gave her an ultimatum of him or the baby. And she ends up bumping into Bill, and they end up falling in love. He, um, he suddenly feels like he wants more from life. A woman who he really loves and a real family again. Sorry, my phone just went off. Um, and, but he doesn't want the heartache of another man's baby, um, or in wife. Uh, neither of them do, um, but they can't help themselves. Um, they're actually drawn to each other. They live, they love, they laugh, they struggle, they survive. Um, and they end up making each other laugh and cry, so. Oh no, it'll make you laugh and cry. So basically, it's just a struggle from them trying to get their lives together, falling in love with each other and everything, so. So, yeah, it sounds like a pretty good book. My sister actually read that book, and she said it was pretty good, um, so I ended up uh, getting it from the library. Um, they do book sales, and I ended up getting that from the book sale. Like, I got the um, a couple of these from the book sale, so... Alright, so this is Crank. Um, this is Crank and Glass by um, Ellen Hopkins. Now, I did read these two books, but it's been a really long time. I got them for... No, I bought them off of Amazon like two or three years ago. And it is about a girl who... And these books are actually fairly easy to read, and I'm going to show you why. It's actually, you see how these pages are? They're like that on every single page. So it's actually fairly easy to read. It's a regular book. It's not a poem book or anything. It's just, it's a regular book. And, um, it's about a girl. Christina was a perfect girl, gifted high school junior, quiet, not even, not, never any trouble. Then she meets the monster, Crank. Um, and what begins as a wild ride turns into the struggle for mind, uh, for her mind, her soul, and her life. She goes to her dad's house. I remember. She goes to her dad's house, meets a boy, and I think this boy got her addicted to Crank. And her dad did it, so she did Crank with her dad and this boy. Um, and her dad didn't do Crank with her until he realized she was doing Crank. And then she ended up getting raped and became pregnant. She went back to her mom's house, and while she was doing crank, she was with this this other boy. After she went back to her dad's or her mom's house, and she ended up getting raped. She didn't tell anyone because she was also high on crank, and she knew that her mom would take her to the hospital and find out she was on crank. And I don't think they'd be much for her to do. She ends up getting pregnant, and she lives with her parents, and her parents find out that she's, you know, on crank. So they say, you need to straighten up your life, you need to get a job, you need to stop the drugs. She does stop, when she finds out she's pregnant, she does get off the drugs. And she does pretty good for like the first year after this baby's born. She doesn't do any more drugs, she... And so she gets this job, because she needed a job to pay for this baby's formula, the food, the diapers, because the parent, her mom, was tired of having to do it. So, um, and then she, this girl finally got a job, and that's when she started getting money. She was buying diapers, but she was also saving up money to get these drugs, this crack again. Because she was starting to get the itch for the crank. So, um, and that was, I think, at the end of Glass. But I think there's, like, two or three more books. Um, that I didn't read them, I think. I, that was towards the end of Glass. But, 
my cat's about acting raw and crazy because of the cat. So if you hear like a little thudding behind the camera, it's my cat. Um, um, that's just in there. It's got like a little notchka thing that my parents got from what is it Ohio? Oh, I'm already got it. Oh. Wow. Wyoming. That's from Wyoming. Not anything special. It's um Wyoming. It's hand trapped in Wyoming. Sorry, I thought I heard something. Alright, um, alright, so the first one, what is this? Oh, there's my tailor. There's my tailor. Um, I only got to page six on this. Um, this is Dark Prince by Christine Freehan. Uh, Feehan. Uh, the Dark Prince. Um, it's Author's Cut Special Edition. Um, I don't know what this is about. Uh, Into the Enchanted World of Carpathians, where dark adventure, mystery, and love await, and the dark desire of two daring hearts unite in one irresistible passion. A uh, telepathic hunter of serial killers, Raven Whitney, helps to catch some of the most deprived criminals, but her work keeps her from getting close to others and drains her body and spirit in need of rest and rejuvenation as she embarks for a vacation far from home. Macaw is the Prince of Carpathians, the powerful leader of wise and ancient race that thrives in the night. Engulfed for desire and fear, never finding a mate who can save him from the increase from darkness, his soul cries out in loneliness. It's the day, the beautiful night, the beautiful voice full of light and love responds softly and soothing his pain and yearning. So basically, um, he meets Raven, and Raven basically rejuvenates him. Basically, that's what it's saying. Um, so yeah, right, it's about a hunter and a king, no, a hunter and a prince, uh, who fall in love. I actually, some of these books, reading the description now, it makes me want to read these books um, more. But it's like, I, I have like a whole list of books that i got to read first. Um, right, this is, oh, and that's um, Dark Prince by Christine Fee Feehan. Um, let me show you this again. So this is Spellwright by Blake Charlton. Um, I don't know if this is about it. Oh, wizard, why does my phone keep going off? Jeez Louise, let me put this on vibrate. It's starting to get on my nerves. Alright, um... About each magic, um, his mentor, famous wizard, Agra, told him how to cast spells, made from Lumicent, uh, magic wounds, how to kill with mortal. Every time he touched a magical text, he unintentionally corrupted it. Turning a useful spell into a dangerously potential deadly misspell. A powerful witch wizard is murdered with a misspell. Uh, Nick Dermis, which is that's the actual name, and Shannon are both suspected. Worst, Nick Dermis, Nicodemus. Um, dreams of a foreign city under attack for from an ancient godlike spell and wakes to find Starhaven a buzz with the news of the city's actual destruction. Alright, uh, so basically 
Um, there's a wizard who was murdered, and two people are being accused of something that they didn't do. And this guy has to begin a quest, uh, a quest or something to pursue. He has no choice but to free his pursuers so that he can discover the truth about the murders. Uh, so he's got to basically got to go on a quest and also, um also avoid his pursuers to find out who actually did the murders so that way he is not being wrongfully accused anymore. Um, so, that actually sounds really interesting. Um, I don't, I don't know if I'll read that. I mean, I will read it. It's in my collection of books. It's just, I'll probably read that last. Alright, so this is Shift by Tim Cringe, um, who's the creators of Heroes and Dale Peck. That's what it says right here. Um, I don't know what this is about either. Like I said, like I said in the last, the part two, half of these books I did read, half of them I didn't. Well, this happens to be one of those books I did not read. Um, oh, this is by... Um, this is by Tim Cringe and Dale Peck. Oh, I didn't see it. Hey, Mitch, I didn't see how you want it. Um, I can always watch it later. It's always recording. Um, I don't know how. Set in the 1960s is the story of Chandler uh, Forstall, a man whose life is changed forever. When he is unwittingly dragged into the CIA mind control experiment after giving a massive dose of LSD, Chandler, Chandler develops a frightening um, array of mental powers with his one in a billion brain chemistry. Chandler, Chandler, uh, Chandler's heightened perception uncovers a plot to assassinate President Kennedy. Okay, so basically he tries to help people find out who killed people and try to avoid it. Or try to kill President Kennedy and try how to uh, rewrite it. So, yeah, basically this guy, basically he's trying to figure out how to avoid President Kennedy from dying. How to protect the president from dying instead of just letting him die. Um, so, yeah, and this is just a little booklet on a game, cross, um, Animal Crossing. Um, basically, uh, you, you guys probably know books like these. Um, I have several of these. Um, I have a whole bunch of these in a crate, like, scattered in, like, two crates. You guys probably know what these are, like, you guys have probably gotten these, bought these for, like, other games that you guys play, so I don't gotta remind you guys what that is. Let me put this back. Try not to make so much noise. Alright, now I'm gonna move up. I'm sorry, it's taking so long. Time to go up. I love my webcam right now. Um, alright. So I'm gonna move on to this series right here. Oh. Alright. Okay, I already did this book. This was in the first book tour, the very first book tour I posted on here. And so is this. I put these over here because they're on my nightstand. Oh, oh, that looks disgusting. God damn it. Sorry, guys. Ah. Right now, get two Opera meals for just 10 
here. Alright, sorry. Uh, sit down. I hurt my knee. Alright. Alright, so. The next series I'm going to do is the, di the Divergent series. This was actually my birthday present from 2014. Um, it was something that I really wanted, and my mom bought it for me. Um, it comes in this box set here. In the box set here, as you see, two books are missing. And I'm going to add them to the collection for a second. So you guys can see. Well, I can't add this to the second one because I'm still reading the second one. I'm almost finished with it. Um, but it is Divergent, Insurgent, Elegant, and Four. Um, and I keep moving it the wrong way. And it's going to basically look somewhat like this in the in the book the case um and you guys probably know about this series it's a big movie series now um they're coming out with um elegant or however you want to say that um and it, this book series is by veronica roth um, you guys probably know a lot about this series. Like I said, it is um, a, a big, huge movie series right now. Um, so you guys probably know a lot about it. If you haven't, um, I'm going to quickly describe it. Um, basically, there, there are divergence which cannot be controlled. And people fear them because they cannot be controlled by simulation. So they have to hide... Um, they have to hide who they are because they're afraid of being killed. Um, several of them have been killed and they want to avoid that. They're trying to keep that from happening. Um, alright, so the next book series is going to be The Famous. Eh. The Ever So Famous Hobbit Collection by... J.R.R. Tolkien. Um, and I, like I said in the, the second the second part yesterday, I have a Hobbit book here as well. Um, right here. Um, I got that one maybe like five months ago, six months ago, but I did not have the whole set. So, that's where this came in. I bought this at Barnes and Nobles, which is um, the store is about an hour away by the mall. But I love Barnes and Nobles. They closed down Borders, which is which was the closest one, but Borders went out of business, and Barnes and Nobles became the new thing when Barnes and Nobles came out with the Nook series. So yeah, um, and. Yeah, Borders was actually, I think, half the time it took to get to uh, Barnes and Nobles. But Barnes and Nobles had a bigger selection of books and stuff. So, and I got this with my books. One is Gandalf and one is Bilbo. Um, from the Hobbit movie, of course. Um. That is how much you know I love this movie. I have posters of it. Well, I actually have like two posters. But yeah, um, I love The Hobbit. Always will love The Hobbit. Hobbit will be my favorite. Um, Hobbit. I think the Hobbit series, the Divergent series, and the Twilight series are my favorite. Um, let me close that. Let me close that. Don't need it open right now. Move that to the side. Did I do all the books? Yes. Alright, sorry guys. I just gotta adjust it closer to here. Ah. Oh. Alright. Okay. So, this series, hopefully you guys know. Um, this is the City of... No, this is the Mortal Instruments series. 
Um, the second book that oh, you guys can't see it. Okay. That's the, that's a cat tree, by the way. Treat, by the way. It goes. Um, It goes in this toy thingy here. Whether they wish us well. Yeah, you stick it in there, they bat at it, you put another one in there. Whether we will pay any price. Yeah. We will bear any burden. We will meet any hardship. We will support any So yeah, this is the Mortal Instruments series. Um the survival and the success of Um There's six in here. Get this book back in there. are many brave heroes who have fallen, proving those words to be Come on, you ass hat. Memorial Day is a celebration of that sacrifice. Alright, there. Okay. Sorry, couldn't get in. Um, that, don't take that pervertedly. Um, yeah. One through six. Um, you can see the design on there is actually pretty nice. There's the City of Bones, City of Ashes, City of Glass, City of Fallen Angels, City of Lost Souls, and City of Heavenly Fire. Um, and I made, I did set that in order uh, from one, from one to six. So, and you can see up here, uh, the pictures on the front, those are the actual pictures on the front, going from 1 to 6. Um, and you can actually see the titles on the front here as well, and those are actually going from 1 to 6 as well. So this thing is actually really heavy. And, um, this is by Cassandra Clare. It's a really good series, and I love it. And all right, John, turning down a little bit. All right, um, and this is Clockwork Angel. This is um a Shadow Hunters novel, which is just like this, but this is the next part in the series. Um, this. This book comes after the sixth one of this. So, yeah. Um, this is Clockwork Angels, The Inferno Devices, book one. Oh, this is... The the series is The Inferno Devices, and this one is called Clockwork. Uh, the next one will be Clockwork Prince. Uh, and the one after that will be... Clockwork Princess. So I haven't read this book yet. I've only gotten to book two of this series up here. I've only gotten to this one. Um, but I will make sure to read them all. No. God. Why is she so naughty? Um. But yeah, it's a good series. There by it's by Cassandra Clare. Um, I will let you see this again. So that way you guys can see the name. Um, and this is the Mortal Instruments, Mortal Instruments series. And this is the Infernal Devices instrument. No, the Infernal Devices series. Um, alright. Um, I'm just going to try to make this as quick as possible because it is 10, 10 o'clock. No, 10 3 p.m. at night. Um, so I do have to hurry because my bed, my bedroom is, um, right above my parents' bedroom, so. Ugh. Ow, it still fucking fell, really? Um, right. I'm gonna read this. Or not read this, um, say this. What is that? Um, alright, so, book one and book two. Um, innocent, the Innocent Mage, um, King Maker, King Breaker, book one, by Karen Miller, 
And this is the Awakened Mage. Um, Kingmaker, Kingbreaker, Book 2. Um, the way you can tell them the difference is one has a green cloak, two has a red cloak. Um, haven't read it yet. Haven't read either of them yet, but I saw them in the library and I had to get them because um, I know that they're about magical beings. Um, so I had to get it. Um, being a fisherman like his father isn't a bad life, but it's not the one that Asher wants. Desperate for his humble roots, Asher has a grand dreams, they call him, to Doran, Dora, Dorana, home to princes, beggars, and the warrior mages, who protect the kingdom uh, for generations. Um, little does Asher know, however, that his arrival to, to the city is being closely watched by members of the circle, people dedicated to preserving an ancient magic star. You're gonna get smacked. Oh, um, she's so naughty. I don't know why she's being so bad right now. Oh! I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit her with something. Would you knock down, asshole? Get knocked down by some bimbo. It's knocking shit off. All right, sorry about that. Alright, so, oh, um, these two are, um, by Karen Miller. Um, like I said, I'm trying to make this as quick as possible, um, because this video is now 31 minutes long, or 32 minutes long. Um, and I don't want to bore you guys for too long. Um, this book is, um, Pathfinder. Todd Hunter Moon book or uh, Todd Hunter Moon book one. I don't know how well you guys can see that because of the glare. Um, and this is Pathfinder by Angie Sage. Um, taking place seven years after original Semptus Heap series, this first book of the Todd Hunter Moon trilogy tells the story of Alice Todd Hunter Moon. A young pathfinder who leaves her seaside village in search of her friend Ferdy. Rumor has it that Ferdy has been taken by mysterious creatures called Garmin under orders from a malevolent lady. Full of Angie's sage characters, humor her and appearance by a little petite spin off. Alright, so basically, she has to go find her friend, but. Rumors say that he's been taken by um, by a creep by creatures under the orders of um, lady of uh, a very devious woman. Um, so she has to go find them. I think by herself or somebody else. I don't know. I um, haven't read this yet. Um, I think. When I bought this, I was really planning on reading it. First, I screwed her! Really, you broke him, asshole? Fucking bitch. Fucking hate that cat right now. Alright, um. Oh, that's by Angie Sage. Um, let me. Right there. Alright, so this is another. Gray Griffith Griffin's book. Um, oh, how many? All right, so this is the Revenge of the Shadow King by Derek Derek Benz and J. S. Lewis. Um, that name sounds so familiar. I swear it does. Um, and Max Summer and his three best friends Haley and Ernie, Haley, Ernie, and Nat Natalia who formed the secret club Grey Griffins seems to be the only people <clears throat> in their small, normal Minnesota town to notice that strange things started happening with creatures like goblins and fairies and unicorns. All creatures from a card game that Grey Griffins play begin to make appearances in Mac's backyard. 
Max and his friends know something is wrong and it's up to them to stop the wicked creatures of the card game from destroying the town and indeed their worlds. So yeah, I actually liked it because of the name and because of the cover. Um, and it's a hardback book. I don't know if they made hardback or paperback books. I don't know. Um, all I saw was this one in the, when they were selling it, so. So yeah. Sorry, I had something in my throat. Alright, let me move on. Alright, so this is... Ooh, that would be bad. This is um, Love or Mine, a novel by Black... The, a novel of the Black Dagger Bro Brotherhood by J.R. Ward. Um, this woman looks so familiar. Um, she really looks very familiar. Um... I got the chapter 3 on here, but I don't remember anything from this. In the darkest corners of night, in, uh, Dr. Oh my god. <laughs> um, in the darkest corners of night in Caldwell, New York, a conflict like no other rages. Long divided as terrifying battleground for the vampires and the new enemies and their enemies. The city is home of the band of brotherhood brothers born to defy their race the warrior vampires of the black dagger brotherhood all right so basically these assa these assassins um are defying their their race or they're trying to Or they're trying to stop whoever's defying their clan. Um, and I think he falls in love with somebody. Um, I think he falls in love with someone after he's taken by the Brotherhood. Fallen Brotherhood, Darius returns. I don't know. Um, I really don't know, but, um, I was told it was a really good book by a couple of people. I'm drilling. Um, so, by the title, Love or Mine, um, someone in here falls in love. Um, and this is by J.R. Ward. So, yeah. Alright, and the last, the last book of this spot is the immortal prince the tide lords book one um by jennifer fallon um it's about a shaman of that i think uh, um uh when a routine uh hanging goes wrong a murderer somehow survives the noose the man announces that he is immortal, and not just any immortal, but Kale, Kael, the immortal prince hero of legend, thought to be only fictional character. He, to most, he is a figure. He is a figure out of the tide of Lord Terret, and only Lord, uh, the only record left on Amarathi, Amaratha. Of the magical beings who fabled, fables tell created the half human, half animal, Chrissy, cr uh, Crassy, Crassy, a race of slaves. Um, Arcadi Desine, Deshawn, is an expert on legends of the Tide, the Tide Lords. So, at the request of the king's spy master. She is sent to interrogate this would-be immortal, hoping to prove he is a spy, or at the very least, a madman. Okay. Um. Um. Arcady finds herself believing him against her own good sense, um, as she begins to truly believe the Tide Lord 
the Tide Lords, her own web of lies begins to unravel. Alright, that actually sounds pretty good. Um, this is another book I actually thought I heard, or this is another book I heard was really good. So, I'm actually tempted to read that, f uh, this after I read this, which is going to be after the book I'm currently reading right now. Uh, Alright, so that is it for this series. Um, so, that is it for the tour. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this, and if you did, leave a thumbs up, and let me know, um, if you guys want me to do an updated, you know, series in a couple of months, or an updated tour in a couple of months, to see, you know, which books I've read, which books I've gotten, and stuff like that. So, and I will do that, per you guys' request. Um, so, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a thumbs up if you did. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!